A car drives through a road in the British countryside. On its back seat, there's an American woman sleeping, Greta Evans. She's woken up by the driver when they finally make it to the house she'll be working at. The driver informs her the house owners had to step out for a second and that she should wait for them in the parlor. Greta enters the house and takes off her shoes, leaving them next to her things by the entrance. When she hears a noise from upstairs, she decides to go there. She finds a painting on the way, a picture of a couple with their son, presumably the family she'll work for. She goes farther inside and finds a child's room, which she enters and grabs a toy for a closer look. The toy is dropped to the ground when she's startled by a man, Malcolm, saying hi from behind. He's the grocery boy. After he introduces himself, he asks her to join him in the kitchen so he can show her around, which she accepts. Once there, they start putting the groceries away while chatting. Malcolm guesses she's American and that she is running away from someone. Eager to change the subject, Greta asks him what the family is like. Malcolm tells her they're very nice and generous. When she asks about the son, however, he hesitates and says he doesn't know how to explain. They're suddenly interrupted by a woman, Mrs. Heelshear, entering the room and asking why Greta isn't wearing any shoes. They go back to the house entrance to retrieve them, but the shoes aren't there where she left them. Mrs. Heelshear tells her they'll show up, it was just her son playing around. Greta outs on different shoes. In another room, Mr. Heelshear is talking to his son, Brahms, whose face is hidden by the chair. The two women arrive then, and Mrs. Heelshear introduces Greta to her husband and son, but when they step aside, the figure sitting on the chair turns out to be a doll. Greta laughs, thinking they're pranking her, but their serious faces tell her that's not the case. They're interrupted by Malcolm, who enters the room and interacts with the doll as if it was a real person. Malcolm leaves then and Greta, encouraged by his reaction, approaches the doll, shakes his hand and tells him she hopes they can be friends. Mrs. Heelshear asks the dad to bring Greta's things up to her room while she shows the new nanny all she needs to know. While making their way upstairs, Mrs. Heelshear tells Greta they tried other nannies and Brahms rejected them all, although they hadn't been as young and pretty as Greta. Once they reach Brahms' room, Mrs. Heelshear guides Greta through the daily routine. Brahms must be woken up every morning at 7 a.m. and changed into clean clothes, which Mrs. Heelshear asks Greta to demonstrate. She disapproves of the way Greta does it, so she ends up stepping in and doing it herself. They go to the studio next. Brahms has three hours of lessons five days a week and likes to start with poetry. Next is music appreciation, which is very important to Brahm and it must be played rather loudly. A couple of hours later, they're all having dinner together, doll included. When they're done, Greta takes the leftovers to the kitchen, but Mrs. Heelshear tells her they don't throw away food because they're in the countryside. They must save it in the freezer for emergencies. Mr. Heelshear walks in then, hands Brahms to his wife and takes Greta with him to check on the traps. Greta follows him outside and finds him getting caught rats from the traps in the garden. While doing all the checking, Mr. Heelshear tells her more about the house, like the fact all windows have been shut permanently. Mr. Heelshear says he isn't sure how they reached this point but he tells Greta that no matter how it looks from the outside, their son is there with them. Greta tells him she understands. In the evening, the parents put Brahms to bed and they pray all together while Greta listens, they include her name in the prayer. Mrs. Heelshear asks Greta for a moment of privacy with her family. Greta waits outside while they chat. But the couple is quick to come out a moment later to tell Greta Brahms wants her as his nanny if she'll have him. Greta agrees and Mrs. Hilshear hugs her. Greta goes to her room to call her sister Sandy on the landline phone. She tells her how weird everything is, including the lack of Wi-Fi and phone signal. Sandy tells her she needed to get away and this job fits her situation perfectly then confesses that Greta's ex, Cole, has been calling her house nonstop, even appeared by the house and scared her kid. But she hasn't told him anything about Greta's current location and promises she never will not wanting to see her sister hurt again. The next morning, Greta leaves her room when she hears some noises and finds Mrs. Heelshear scolding Brahms for throwing his toys on the floor. Mr. Heelshear startles Greta out of her watching, apologizing for the sudden rush. He tells her it's been such a long time since they went on a holiday, they're anxious to go. He also gives Greta a sheet of paper with the rules she must follow every day. We follow Mr. Heelshear and Greta walk towards the house entrance. As Mrs. Heelshear joins them with Brahms in her arms, the husband tells Greta to be good to his boy because then he'll be good for her in return. If she's bad to him though, well, he doesn't get to finish that sentence, because his wife interrupts him. Greta promises she'll treat the boy as if he was his own, and after being handed the doll, Mrs. Heelshear hugs her and apologizes in her ear. Greta takes Brahms outside and together they watch the couple leave in the car. Once back inside, Greta doesn't follow the rules. She leaves Brahms on a random chair and covers him with a blanket because he creeps her out before heading to the kitchen to make a PB and jelly sandwich that she takes with her to a reading chair, where she drinks some wine and eats while reading a magazine. Eventually she falls asleep. It's nighttime when she wakes up. She grabs the tray and intends to take it to the kitchen, but stops midway when she notices the blanket has fallen off Brahms. Creeped out by this, she grabs him and takes him to his room, 
carelessly throwing him on a rocking chair before going to bed. Greta is woken up by the sound of a kid's laughter echoing in the house. She leaves the room to investigate, and when she reaches the painting of the family, she comes closer to look at the kid and is suddenly grabbed by the neck by a hand coming out of it. That's the exact moment she wakes up in bed, perfectly fine. Upset by this dream, she dresses up and goes to Brahm's room to check on him. He's on the chair where she left him, and there's water falling from his eye. Greta comes closer, nervous at the idea it may be tears, but she quickly discovers it's just water from a ceiling leak. To protect the doll, she moves him to the bed before leaving. In another part of the house, she finds a door to an attic and tries to open it using a fire poker to no avail. Later that day, we see Greta trying to keep herself busy. She tries to call her sister but she gets the answering machine. The phone rings as soon as she hangs up, and Greta quickly picks it up, but only hears static noise. The next day, Greta's at the gates picking up the mail when Malcolm arrives in his car with the groceries. They go to the kitchen, where Malcolm shows her they must throw all the leftover food in a trash bag he'll take with him. Greta complains about Malcolm not warning her about Brahms, and he says he didn't want to ruin the surprise. Greta asks him about the story behind the doll. Malcolm takes her to a grave near the house. Turns out Brahms didn't survive a house fire on his eighth birthday. The doll showed up the day after. Malcolm says he knows it all seems very strange, but it's harmless. Greta makes the math and realizes the couple has been living like this for 20 years. Malcolm tells her they had been looking for a nanny for one year before Greta came along and if she's feeling restless, he can take her out and show her the nightlife in town, promising he won't tell anyone. Greta accepts after making sure Malcolm understands it's not a date, because she recently got out of a relationship. In Brahms' room, we learn all the conversations in the house reach Brahms through the walls. Greta is in her own room on the phone with Sandy, telling her about her plans for the night, but isn't able to convince her sister that this isn't a date. Sandy approves, Greta needs to get out more. When glancing at the mirror, Greta notices Brahms looking at her from the other room. Feeling creeped out again, she closes the door. Moments later, she goes to the bathroom to take a shower, unaware of another presence in the room that takes her dress and necklace. When she comes out and looks at herself in the mirror, she notices she's missing a chunk of hair, and right after she notices the missing objects too. Upon returning to her bedroom, she finds all drawers open and all her clothes missing as well. Scared, she leaves the bedroom, only to find the door to the attic open and the stairs ready to climb inside. Starting to think it may be an intruder, she grabs the fire poker and enters the attic. As soon as she's inside, the door closes behind her and she can't open it again. When she hears a car, she goes to the window to see Malcolm knocking on the door. She tries to make noise to call his attention, but he can't hear her. Next she tries breaking the window with the poker, but she only manages to break the poker itself, and Malcolm leaves. While trying to find a way around the place, a human shadow startles her and she falls to the floor the hit to the head knocking her out. She wakes up the next morning still in the attic. She learns his shadow she saw last night was just some clothes on a hanger and finds a photo album from Brahms' childhood. Among all the pictures, there's one of the painting and the photo that it was based on, although on the original, Brahms looked much more serious. Greta's startled out of her thoughts by the attic door suddenly opening on its own. Greta leaves and goes to her room, only to find her clothes back hanging all over the furniture. Malcolm comes by a few hours later to help her check the house for intruders, but he doesn't find any signs of breaking in. Greta points out that doesn't explain her clothes. To help her feel at peace, Malcolm decides to stick around. While playing some pool, Greta asks Malcolm to tell him more about the real Brahms. He says he knows nothing else, but he's clearly lying, so Greta insists. Malcolm tells her there are two kinds of stories around town and the truth is somewhere in between. The polite talk says Brahms was a good kid, the pub talk says he was very strange. When Greta asks for the truth, Malcolm tells him about the day he came to the house with a delivery for what would have been Brahms' birthday. Mrs. Heelshear was opening presents with the doll while Mr. Heelshear was in the pool room, drinking and mumbling he couldn't do it anymore. He invited Malcolm to drink with him and Malcolm asked him about the real Brahms too. The father replied, with a heartbroken look, that the kid was odd. After checking Greta truly is okay on her own, Malcolm leaves. Greta moves to her room to talk to her sister on the phone. Sandy informs Greta that Cole has been by her house again. Sandy's kid, trying to get rid of him, gave Cole Greta's address. Sandy apologizes but Greta doesn't blame her for it. After hanging up, Greta goes to the bathroom to brush her teeth and notices a moving shadow in the mirror. She goes to Brahm's bedroom, where she finds a bunch of paper sheets on the floor. She fixes the position of the doll's face but it moves on its own to look at her, and at that moment, once again, Greta wakes up in her bed. She hears some noises outside so she goes to her door and opens it, only to find her lost shoes waiting for her. Getting scared. She goes to Brahm's room to find him in a new position, sitting on the edge of the bed, the list of rules next to him. Greta runs back to her room and locks the door, then tries to make a call but the phone isn't working. She hangs up, and the phone rings right afterward. When she picks it up, a child's voice says her name and asks her to come out, it also wonders why she isn't following the rules. 
Greta drops the phone, but then there's knocking on the door and something is left in front of it, her favorite the voice says. Greta opens the door to find a tray with a PB and jelly sandwich, and Brahms still sitting on his bed with the rules. Greta approaches the doll and finally understands Brahms only wants her to follow the rules. Malcolm calls and tries to invite her out, but Greta hangs up, all her attention on the doll. Somewhere else far away, the Heelshears are writing a goodbye letter to Brahm before filling their pockets with rocks and walking into the ocean. Next day, Greta starts following the rules to a T, except for the goodnight kiss. Many days later, Malcolm visits her since she wouldn't pick up the phone, he also brings in the mail, which she ignores. After she promises she's doing fine, he tries to ask her out again, she turns him down so he leaves. Along with the doll, Greta tries to make him grab a fruit, asking for a sign of a presence of a spirit in the house. At first there's no answer, but when Greta leaves the room, she hears a noise, Brahms has moved on his own. Hours later, Malcolm returns to the house because Greta called him, she needs someone else to see it. After lots of testing, she's discovered Brahms only moves if nobody can see him. To prove it, she draws on the floor around him with chalk, then leaves the room with Malcolm. When they check on him after some minutes, nothing has happened. But Greta wants to try again, so she asks Brahms really nicely to help her. This time around, when they leave and return, the doll isn't standing on the chalk spot anymore. Malcolm finally believes her. They chat about it afterward. Greta tells him she thinks this is happening for a reason, her ex was abusive and made her lose her pregnancy. Malcolm now understands why this is so important to her and they kiss. Later at night, after putting Brahms to bed, Greta returns to her room where she and Malcolm start making out. Someone is watching them through the keyhole, and the sudden noise of music interrupts them. They come downstairs to find the record player playing and Brahms sitting nearby. Greta takes the doll back to bed before going to the kitchen to make some coffee while Malcolm tells her it would be wise for her to spend the night in town. She refuses, so Malcolm tells her another story. Years ago a little girl called Emily Cribbs used to come over to play with Brahms. Her body was found not far from the house the same day it caught on fire, and they never found the killer. Greta still refuses to leave. She checks on Brahms in his room and for the first time, she gives him the goodnight kiss before leaving for the attic. There she looks at the photo album again, finding pictures of Emily and noticing her annoyed face as Brahms stared at her creepily. The next day, after returning to the house from cleaning traps, she hears the sound of the pool table. She goes there with Brahms and finds out Cole has broken in. They have dinner together and Cole tries to convince her he's changed so she would return to him. Malcolm shows up then and after awkward introductions, he uses the groceries as an excuse to talk to Greta in private. He tells her he's worried Cole will hurt her, but Greta says she has a plan. Malcolm leaves the house but not the area, deciding to stay in the car just in case. Inside, Greta brings Cole sheets and pillows for him to sleep on the couch. Cole tries to convince her to leave together again and goes for a kiss she dodges before leaving. She takes Brahms to his room and, and tells him she needs help. Later that night, we see drops falling on Cole's face, and he wakes up to find rats in his bag, a message in red on the wall that says get out and the doll sitting nearby. Greta runs to him when she hears him yell her name, and when she gets there, he accuses her to be the one behind all this. Greta grabs Brahms and an angry Cole starts chasing her around, Malcolm hears the screaming and gets inside to find Cole taking the doll from Greta. He starts shaking the doll around as he yells, and tired of hearing Greta and Malcolm asking to be careful with Brahms, he smashes the doll against a chair. Something starts making noise in the walls and Cole approaches the mirror to try to follow it better. The mirror suddenly shudders, throwing Cole back and revealing who was making the noises, a grown man wearing a porcelain mask. The real Brahms, calling for Greta with the same kitty voice she heard on the phone before. Brahms jumps on Cole and after some struggling, he manages to kill him. He grabs Greta next, but Malcolm appears from behind and hits him before taking Greta away. Brahms starts chasing them through the house. Greta and Malcolm try to lock themselves in her room, but Brahms knows the secret passages in the walls, so he has no trouble reaching them anywhere. After running around for a while, they finally get a chance to escape when they find the door to one of Brahms' wall passages, which they enter. Greta and Malcolm find a hidden room, the place where Brahms has been living all this time. He has everything he needs and more, Greta finds her dress and hair on a doll Brahms made to imitate her, she also finds the letter from his parents saying they aren't returning and he could have the girl. They go back to the hidden passages and Malcolm finally catches up with them. After some more chasing, he jumps on Malcolm and knocks him out as Greta finds an exit and runs away from the house. She makes it to the gates and stops there, realizing she can't leave yet, she must go back for Malcolm. Back in the house, she grabs a screwdriver that she hides in her pocket before meeting with Brahms. She tells him she's come back for him, then uses her authoritative nanny voice to order him to go back to bed. After some hesitation, he obeys. Greta takes him to his room and puts him to bed, and when she tries to leave, Brahms asks for the goodnight kiss. She refuses, saying that's his punishment for misbehaving. But Brahms grabs her arm and insists, so Greta has no other choice but to lean in for a kiss. 
When Brahms puts his porcelain mouth against her real lips, she takes the chance to retrieve the screwdriver and use it on him. Brahms pushes her away and after getting off the bed, grabs her by the neck and pushes her against the wall, intending to leave her without air. For a moment Greta seems to be out of it, but at the last second, she snaps and pushes the screwdriver deeper until he collapses. A piece of the mask breaks and we see Brahms' face. Greta hurries out of the room to find Malcolm and get him in the car so they can escape the house. She smiles when she realizes they're finally free. The movie ends with a pair of hands wearing sleeves very similar to Brahms, gluing the doll back together.